array, syntax, and all the class methods, all that stuff. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at is the init method business, okay? So we're going to have another class here called playing card deck, right? And a playing card deck is a subclass of deck, right? And it has no public API. It's just going to override a method that it inherits indirectly from NS object, okay, NS object through deck, which doesn't touch it, all the way to playing card deck, and that method is called init, okay? So this is the same init, same kind of method that when we created that array, that mutable array, we said minus mutable array alloc init. So someone is going to call this playing card deck init method, uh, namely you and your homework, are going to call this by doing playing card deck alloc and then on the outside init. Okay? And that's how you're going to create a playing card deck. And that is how we create most instances of objects. Not all, sometimes we do things like the ns string string with format. But most of the time, more than half the time, we do alloc and then on the outside init. Okay, listen carefully. Never call that alloc thing without wrapping an init around it. Okay, don't ever do that. That makes no sense to have an object allocated in the heap that's never been initialized. Always have that nested. And vice versa, never call that init except for when you wrap it around an alloc. And definitely never call that init more than once. Okay, and if you obey my rule of only calling it wrapped around an alloc, you can't call it more than once. Okay, init is not something like you can re-init. Init happens once, right after alloc, and that's it. Okay, that is a hard and fast rule. We never break. Okay, so you heard it here. Don't forget. All right, let's look at the wacky return type to this init method, okay? Uh, this, you might think that this init method should return a playing card deck star because it's kind of initializing and maybe it returns itself. And in fact, init does always return self, okay? So init is always going to return self, okay? More wackiness there, which I'm going to describe. Uh, just for convenience, it always returns self so that you can do like playing card deck alloc, init, send it a message, okay? So it's just convenience that it returns self. But it can't really have its return type being playing card deck star because it inherited this from NS object, and NS object already defined it as NS would have already defined it as NS object star. You see? So it's kind of weird that you're inheriting a method whose return value would have to change every time you um, you know, overrode it. So they invented this new thing, this is new for iOS 7, by the way, called instance type. And what instance type means is this is going to return an object that is of the same instance as, same type, same class type, as the object you sent this message to, okay? Which makes perfect sense for inits. And in this class, that's probably all you're going to use this for, is right here. So if you don't really understand what I just said, it's explained in the slides, but if you don't really understand it, just know that whenever you do an initializer, it's going to return instance type as its return type, and you're always going to return self, okay? Now, also just take my word for it, we're going to do the next, these next lines of codes as well because they are really strange. That first line, self equals super init, that is weird. That is super weird, okay? Assigning something to self in Objective-C, you just never do that except for this one time, and that's in your init, okay? You take self and you assign it to calling your superclasses initializer so that your superclass gets initialized. Why do we assign the result to self? kind of ancient history as to why this has been done for a long time. Basically, we're checking the return of our superclasses init to make sure it properly initialized. Because at any time, if your initializer cannot initialize itself, it should return nil. Okay? And that lets everybody know, any of your subclasses or anyone trying to alloc and initialize you, you could not create a well-formed object. Okay? So you can see how this code, strange as it is, self equals super init, and then if self, I'm going to initialize myself, return self, that's going to ensure that I don't even try to initialize myself if my superclass, when I call it init, in, it, you know, can't initialize itself. Okay? So just do it. If you don't understand it, don't worry about it too much, just do it. Now, one thing here is we're talking about init with no arguments. It is possible to have initializers with arguments, because sometimes you need arguments to properly initialize a class. And we're going to talk about that a little more um, on Monday. Okay, so today we're just going to kind of bare bones init. So what does this init need to do? Uh, what do I need to do to have a well-formed initialized playing card deck? Well, a playing card deck has 52 cards in it, one of each kind of card. Okay, king of clubs, three of diamonds, all, every one, 52 of them. So I just need to, 
iterate through all the suits, and then iterate through all the ranks, and create a card and add it to myself. So here's me iterating through the suits, iterating through the ranks. Everyone cool with that? Then I'm going to import playing card because I'm going to create a playing card, playing card alloc init. Then I'm going to set that card's rank, set that card's suit. Rank and suit are my uh, little uh, iteration variables there. And then I'm going to add it to myself. Now I'm a deck, so that's perfectly fine. Everybody cool with that code? So now I'm a Wellford playing card deck and I can be used to draw random cards and all that stuff, which you will need to do for your homework. Okay? And in fact, for your homework, you're going to have to type all four of these classes in. I want you to get experience entering classes, typing the thing, watching what Xcode complains at you as you mistype things, um, and stuff like that. And then you're going to be using playing card deck and playing card. Uh, well, playing card deck and card really are the two main ones you're going to be using to do your homework. Okay? Questions about that? Okay, so that's it for the slide. So now I'm going to do a big old demo. And this demo is going to integrate everything you've seen so far, okay? Most notably that MVC stuff we talked about, like target action, you know, dropping the target and shooting the action, or the green arrow outlet that points the other way, okay? We're going to show you what that actually looks like in Xcode. I think when I asked who of you have done Xcode, almost every single one of you raise your hand, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about all the buttons in Xcode. I think I'll quickly pass over those, and the, but they are, if you haven't used Xcode, it's in very much detail in the lecture slides. There's kind of this walkthrough. Um, by the way, if you're following along in the lecture slides, my demo is not going to be exactly like what's in the slides. The slides cover a little bit more than I can cover in 40 minutes here, um, and it's also reference material. Okay, so if I do something today in this demo, and you're like, ah, oh, how did he do that? If you go look in those slides, it'll tell you. So do not feel like, oh, I gotta furiously write down every button click he's gonna do in the next 40 minutes. No way, okay? That, uh, follow along in those slides if you want, or just close your laptop and watch and let it sink in, because you're gonna have to reproduce what I'm doing in the next 40 minutes for your homework. And those slides are gonna walk you through step by step how to do it. So do not feel like you need to do anything right now, but let this all sink in. Get a feel for what's going on. Okay? And then when you sit down to do it, you'll be guided through it. Um, next week, we're going to talk a lot more about Objective-C, answer some of these more detailed questions like NS number and some of these other things people are asking. Um, and we'll talk about some of the specific things about Objective-C, like dynamic binding and uh, protocols and things that you, you don't generally see as much in other languages or don't exist in other languages. So we'll try and cover all that so that by the end of next week, you're up to speed in Objective-C, you're starting to really run with um, Xcode, and so the week after that we can really start doing some uh, you know, high-power uh, iOS 7 stuff. Okay, so demo here. Let's with that. All right. So the demo uh, I'm going to run in Xcode. So I'm just going to launch Xcode. So Xcode you get by running, going to your Mac app store. That's this thing down here, right? Okay, the app store on your Mac. And you just search for Xcode and find it. It's free. You download it and you run it. Okay, it's as simple as that. This is what it's going to look like when you first um, bring it up, the splash screen here. Uh, as the quarter goes on, this will fill up with all the projects that you're doing. You're probably used to that if you know Xcode. And what we're going to do today is create a new project. So you can either uh, check an existing product, project out of source control or you can create a new one. And so we're going to create a new one. So when we create a new one, it wants to uh, give us some, a little bit of help by offering to create a template for different kinds of applications, like an OpenGL game. Okay, it'll create some framework for that for you. Um, Master detail application is something we're going to do later in the quarter, although we're going to build all the code ourselves. We're not going to use this template. And this single view application one right here is basically a single MVC, which is how we're going to start all of our applications in this class. With a single MVC, then we're going to add more MVCs and build up. Okay? So this is the, your basic single MVC app. So we're going to click that. And here it's going to ask for information, some information about it, like what do you want to call this app? Um, this is a card matching game I decided to call Machismo. Okay, so that's going to be the name of our app, just for fun. 
And organization name can be anything you want. It's going to appear in the headers of your, all the classes that you create. So I make mine be Stanford University. You can make your be Bob's Game House or whatever. Um, this identifier should be unique uh, to you. So I have edu.stanford.cs193p.instructor. You might have edu.stanford.cs193p.yoursunet ID. That would be completely unique. Um, these reverse DNS is a really good way to create a unique name. And it's going to create a unique name for this app by combining this with the name. So you can see it's done that here, this bundle identifier. And then this class prefix, uh, this template is going to create uh, a view and a controller for us. And this is saying, what do you want the name of your controller class to be? By default, it's going to be called view controller. Okay? But if you type something here like card game, now it's going to be called card game view controller, which is a little better name for us. So that's just the prefix it's going to put on the name of your controller that it creates for you. And then finally here, we can create an app here just for iPad or just for iPhone or a universal app that will run on both platforms. Now, when you create a universal app, you still have to design your UIs separately. Because if you have more screen real estate, you're just going to design a different UI. Okay, iPad is not just a big iPhone. You can do a lot more stuff when you have more screen real estate. Um, but you still might have a lot of your MVCs shared, right? Because that iPad might have little sub areas that are an MVC that are exactly the same as on an iPhone or very, very similar. So um, totally supported in iOS 7 to build apps that target both platforms and has great tools for letting you build your two UIs separate, UI separately and share all the MVCs underneath. Okay? We're going to do iPhone only here just because it keeps the screen small and I only have so much real estate here. I'm assuming the iPad is possible that they'll click on apps that are made for iPhone. Mm -hmm. so is that automatically done? Or yeah, so the question is um, if I'm on my iPad and I run an app that's iPhone only, yes, there's an emulation mode essentially um, that will kind of make a big iPhone shaped thing on the iPad screen. Uh, so we're going to do iPhone here, so that's it. I'm going to hit next. Next it wants to know where are you going to put this project. I strongly recommend putting it in your home directory, in a, in a directory called developer in your home directory. Okay? Uh, unless maybe you're working on different class, maybe you have a CS193P in your home directory and then another class. But bottom line, put it in your home directory. Do not put it like in root or somewhere like that. That will cause uh, or has in the past caused problems. But a great place to put it here, this is my home directory, CS193P, there I see home directory, developer. Um, this is where I'm going to put it. I don't have any projects yet. Um, this little thing down here, source control, we will be talking about that. It's really nicely integrated into Xcode, but we're not going to talk about it today. So leave that unclicked. And so here's our new project. You can see it shows us this screen, which you get to by clicking on this very top thing up here. So this is kind of like our project settings, and there's a whole bunch of settings here. We'll be talking about all this stuff as the quarter goes on, but today we're not going to talk about any of it because we want to focus on our MVC. And uh, our MVC, this right here, main.storyboard, is our view. Okay, That's our view of our MVC. And then you see this card game view controller M and H? That's our controller. There's no model here. Your model is going to be those four classes, deck, card, playing card, playing card, deck. That's going to be your model. 